Welcome. To Arcade Audio. And germs, welcome, welcome, welcome to Dill Time Paul. I'm Johnny. I'm Spencer. Here on Dill Time Paul, we go on Wikipedia. We click random article. And we talk about it. Yeah, we do. Johnny, I have something for you. I have something for you. Shit. Who wants to go first? Mine's a little more time sensitive. Then let's, let's do yours. It's a frog. There are no <laughs> holes in the jar. <laughs> All right, lay it on me. Um, so over the weekend, Jessica and I went to Mitsua, the Japanese market okay. in the suburbs. Okay. It's Crazy. Okay, it's, you like know, a, it's like they picked up a Japanese, an actual Japanese market, and just popped it down in Chicago. And then like four hundred other Japanese stores, then they crammed into this. That's amazing. Store. Okay, it, it is the you know Lost Eras that crazy costume store. Yes, it is the one that, that we got lost in. Yes, basically. it is that for Japanese products and foods and goods. Wow. Okay, I need to take you there. Yeah, that that's like my dream. Uh, like when I when I go insane, that's where I want to live. But since I since I can't take you there now, mm-hmm. I will take a little bit of Mitsuo to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it we showed up, never oh, been before. Sure. It happened to be like sake fest. Whoa! So there was just like a table that had like like 30, 30 different sake that's that crazy. they were sampling. So we just we were like, whoa, fuck! And yeah. it was all free, so we just like tried a bunch. You showed up out of the blue, and they were like, here, have all this alcohol. Straight up, as we were walking in, they were like. Uh, here, just grab a wristband and try whatever you want. It's all free. And we're like, oh, that's crazy. Fuck? They also they had they had samples like Costco has samples of just like whatever. Wow. One of the things they had was like crazy like Wagyu beef. What? That was like fifty five dollars a pound, and I just they just, just gave me a free sample. That's insane. And it was out of control. Okay, that's awesome. It's the best store in the world. Okay. So anyway, so you got me some uh, some Wagyu beef yep. that's just been sitting around. Uh, we it's it's one <laughs> it's point cube. four ounces, <laughs> and I will need twelve dollars for it. <laughs> um, so Jessica and I tried a bunch of sake, okay. and we f- we found the most uh, disgusting sweet one. <laughs> ah, yes, because you know I love uh, so, dessert wines. Yeah, so I've got. I've got a couple glasses. Um, oh man, we're gonna do it. We're gonna. We're I mean, gonna, we don't have to. I'm not. No, gonna, no, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm pressure. This. I love this. This is. A, yeah, we'll. We'll uh, do some interactive. Wow, it has a color to it. Sake doesn't usually have a color. Yeah, this is. This um, looks like tang. This is uh, Nigori. It's a. It's got. It's a wine specialty. Rice wine with mango added. Oh my god, that's awesome! I, I'm very excited. Uh, yeah, like every every time we go to like a um, a wine tasting tour, and we when we get wine tastings, the last one's always some sort of ice wine or something that I love and and y'all hate. Everyone hates it but me. Let's do a little to start, and then maybe we can just sip as we, you know, as we please. As we, as we please. I'm going to give it a little whiff here. Yeah. Yeah, get a stank. It's got a crazy smell to it. Mm-hmm. It's, it smells like mango. It's uh, So I've tried it. Okay. It's juice. Right. Kanpai. <laughs> Kanpai. Wow. This rules. Yeah. This is alcoholic? Yeah. This is dangerous to children. <laughs> and... A child would drink this whole thing. Yeah. And it was... I'm a child, by the way. Yeah. Does it have the uh, alcohol content? It's got to. It's got to. I don't know. I'll, I'll let you take a look at it. Maybe. Okay. Maybe you'll maybe you'll pour some more. Maybe you won't. I don't know. But in the meantime, I've got a, a five star iTunes review that I'd I'd love to read. Seven seven percent. So not much. So, so like oh, a, about a beer's worth of. This is funny. Seven to eight percent by volume. <laughs> Where? Yeah. It's hard Meh. to tell. <clears throat> this is uh this review is. Uh, titled Almost Killed Me One Time. Okay, good. This is of our podcast. We'll try harder next time. <laughs> and uh, this is by the user. Username is uh, Vriska Did Nothing Wrong. <clears throat> okay. okay. This is what they say. This is a little bit of a story for us. Most of the time when I listen to podcasts, it's for one of three reasons. One, I need them or I can't fall asleep. Two, for funny jokes and goofs. Or three, to, exper- <laughs> <laughs> three, to experience but a taste of what it is like to have a friend who you talk to on a regular basis. This one hits all three of those. Hmm. It's a super chill listen, but also has had me laughing to the point of tears. Like one time I had an episode playing while I was on a treadmill and I was too out of breath to actually laugh at the Cheeto cereal bit, but it was, <laughs> episode 346 for those who are wondering, but it was really funny. So I just kind of dry heaved until I fell off the treadmill. And in that moment, I legitimately thought I was going to die and it would be smell you never for your girl. Anyway, five stars. The jokes were too hot and I almost passed away. Oh man. Um, very funny. Very that good. Cheeto cereal is a, a cursed Creation. It is a cursed creation. Uh, episode three forty six, I, I believe, is you can you can check that out for yourself. I'm su- I'm impressed that you remember. That. I did, and I looked it up specifically. Um, so yeah, thank you for the review. That's very kind of you. I'm sorry we almost killed you. Um, but if you'd like I'm to sorry re- too, if you'd like to leave your own review, you can uh, do so on iTunes, um, or whatever it's called now. 
Is it not called iTunes anymore? I don't know. Apple, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone. Air Tunes. It's, it's, yeah. Air, Air Tunes. Air Hogs. Two <laughs> wide receiver. What is it? Two, 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 two air, air, two tunes. Mm-hmm. Um, that reminds me that I, I have said that I'm going to say the episode numbers. Oh, yeah, that's right. 349. This is 349. This is 349. Okay. So get ready. Buckle up. You want an article? Uh, I would like an article. I realized that I was I was so caught up thinking about the sake that I... You failed to do your actual job. I'm yeah. going to pour myself some more of it because hey. uh, I've got a taste for it now. Fill, fill me up, brother. All right. So this episode and the one we recorded directly after will be very good. It will be 7 to 8% better. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm looking at your computer and it seems like it doesn't want to be um, on. It does not want to be on on. Um, but that's okay. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just have a little... I'll make it so. This will be a sake episode where we just talk about the good mouthfeels and the um, tasting notes. Do you this know... This like mango and rice do you, wine. Do you know much about sake? No. I will tell you this. Sake was the very first alcoholic beverage I ever consumed. Interesting. Yeah. Was that at Sushi Mike's? It was at Sushi Mike's. It was at the behest of Sushi Mike. Well, then you, you got it. That's exactly what happened. I, I was with my, my buddy Taylor, and we were enjoying a very nice sushi dinner that Mike, Sushi Mike was providing to us. And we hit it off with him so well that he brought out the sake, which they don't serve at the restaurant. They don't have an alcohol license or liquor license. So it was just like on the house, like, let's have some sake, dudes. And I was like, all right, dude, let's fucking drink some sake with Sushi Mike. I want to go back to that place. I, yeah, I do. Because I haven't been in years, and it was extremely good. It was extremely if, good. If anyone's wondering, it's uh, Tanashi Sushi in Andersonville, Chicago. Okay. It was great. You just You just roll up. Sushi Mike says... What are you kind of into? Yeah. And then you don't order anything. He, he just gives you what he wants to give you. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like straight up putting it in my mouth. That I don't rules. know if he was doing that. To, like, like he like he created this like mango dessert thing. And was just mango, like, you say? Yeah. And like I went to grab it. He's like, no, no, no. Here. Oh, <laughs> he just like yes. put it in my mouth. And I was like, okay, dude. It was, it was a hoot. It was a hoot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even remember. It was like mango, and there's like some kind of like sauce on it or something. It was, it was like a little mango taco kind of a thing. Mango taco? It was yeah, it was wild. I never had such a thing. Um, how's the um? Okay, we're connecting to the internet right now, so that's a good place to be for for getting an article. This this will be a this will be a little easy breezy episode where we're just kind of shooting the the breeze. Easy, easy breezy beautiful cover girl. That's another one. Like we were talking earlier about ad campaigns that are just I don't know part of our being now. Um, do you know people are seventy percent water and thirty percent ads? <laughs> so I got real excited when I saw this and now I'm not excited. Okay. Um Mukilteo station. Okay. Is this uh, some sort of train station maybe in um the Congo maybe? So I saw it it looked Japanese to me. That was my instinct. It ain't. It's in Washington. Okay. Uh state? Yes. It's a train station serving the city of Mukilteo. Mukilteo, Washington. It is owned by Sound Transit, who runs the North Line of their Sounder commuter rail, bad name, service through the station from Everett to King Street Station in Seattle. The station includes a parking lot. Cool. You want to guess how many spaces? 803. 63. Well, that's a very small parking space. As well as connections to nearby Washington State Ferries, Community Transit, and Everett Transit Service on State Route 525. Mukilteo Station opened in 2008 with a single side platform, later supplemented with a second platform and pedestrian overpass in 2016. Ooh, they got two platforms now. They've got it all. Wow. It That's, sounds like it. This is a pretty, I mean, it's not a huge article, but it's a pretty long article for a train station that sounds bad. I, there are bigger train stations in the city of Chicago for the local CTA, I feel like, than this. Oh, for sure. You know? Yeah. This is for a whole city or like a whole, you know, whatever municipality. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know the the population of the town. So maybe it's like, you know, not a lot of, I mean, maybe it's only 63 people and everybody gets their own spot. <laughs> this you know? is Doug's spot. This is Brian's spot. Um, It's, it's. It's odd. They, they do offer... Do people uh, have names like that anymore? Doug and Brian? Doug and Brian. Old people. Right? I know someone who is our age named Brian. I do not know someone who is our age named Doug. No. I, I don't know it, if I've ever met anyone There's a guy Doug. I went to school with named Frank. Named Frank. Okay. I don't know if... I don't know if I know any Franks. Why would you? Right. I know a couple of Nates. I know some Nates. These are all pretty crazy names, right? 
Well, they're so they're so mundane. That That's it's, what it makes it's it crazy. Like, yeah, they're normcore names. They're normcore names. Yeah, they're the chunky white sneakers that Jerry Seinfeld wears of names. Is Norm a normcore name? Norm is a normcore name. Okay. Um, What's the most normcore name? Fred. 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 Bob. Maybe it's Bob. Maybe it's Bob. I don't know. Bob, Bob feels like a fake name. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like anytime that like someone someone does a, a hacky like improv scene that has like a little kid in it, that kid's name is always Billy. Mm-hmm. It's like that to me. Is Billy a norm a normcore name? Bill. What about Bill? Just Bill. Bill feels more real for for. That's my for dad's me. name. It is. Yeah, I didn't know. His that. real name is William, but he sure. goes by Bill. Bill Hamilton. <sighs> it's a pretty good name. That feels like a normcore name. N- Hamilton makes it it's too too, too much. Yeah. What did he need, like? Bob like Bill Zabisco, Zabisco. <laughs> like okay, Wayne Zelensky. <laughs> that's a normcore name. Wayne Zelensky is a very good normcore <laughs> name. Cause yeah, like that's good. Cause you don't want it to just be like, like Creme Grudge. Creme, like, right? <laughs> Creme Grudge is not Creme, a, No, that's a that's that, a crazy name. Right. That's the a goblin boss's name. Wayne Zelens- Zelensky. Wayne Zelensky is good. The the dad from Home uh, from uh, Home, Honey, I Shrunk the Home Improvement. Home Home Improvement alone. What was Tim Allen's character's name in that? Tim Tim Allen. Taylor. Tim Taylor. Tim the Toolman Taylor. Oh, okay. So he has a good middle name. Tim. Tim Taylor's not as normcore. No, it's got Wayne little, Zelensky feels Wayne Zelensky is good. I wonder if the the characters coloring our idea of it. Tim Taylor's bad because it's got alliterativeness. Yeah, you can't be alliterative. It's too fun. Um, what was Al, Al Borland? That's not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, what Al Bundy? Al Bundy. Yeah, that's a man. These guys are kind of like on it. Can we invent our own name? Because I want to. I want to. Divorce ourselves from characters Because sure. these yeah, guys are yeah. normcore It'd be like Jerry Seinfeld Like yeah I guess so huh Jerry Seinfeld does not sound normcore to me it's, George think, Costanza sounds more normcore <laughs> <laughs> Yeah cause Jerry's got a fun Like Jer has a Jer, fun name Jer, yeah. It's got a fun sound Elaine Bennis is also a very uh, normcore name Bennis ben, Right? Bennis <laughs> Bennis is a really it's, funny last name <laughs> Cause it, cause it's. What about the here's for a last name like is Kirkland. Kirkland is a good normcore yeah. last name. Yeah, Elizabeth Kirkland. Uh, Liz Kirkland. Liz Elizabeth Kirkland. Liz feels too fun. Yeah, yeah, sure. Beth Kirkland. Beth Kirkland. Megan Kirkland. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got Megan Kirkland. Who's, Megan Kirkland. So let, let's maybe come up with like her husband, maybe, so we can get. Well, we've got to get... Where do you start? Do you start with the first name or the last name? Well, his last name is not Kirkland. No, 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 no. Definitely not. So that's... Kirkland is his maiden name. Okay. Um, is the last name Douglas? Douglas is good. <laughs> Shit. Douglas. Like... Peter Douglas? Peter Douglas. Peter's close. Peter's close, but it's not yeah, close. And it's right. Close, but no cigar. Harvey Douglas. Harvey Douglas. <laughs> Harvey's too fun. I, okay, Harvey's too fun. All right. No wise. I don't think you can have a wise or too fun. Wise or fun. Okay, because maybe they're a vowel, maybe they're not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. Trent? Trent is too fun. Trent is too fun, for sure. Darren? No, no it's alliterative. Darren, it's alliterative. No good. I do like Darren, though. Well, maybe Darren's a first name. Darren Edwards? <laughs> Darren Edwards, Darren Hoffman, Darren Hoffman. No, no he got the N. No, that's yeah, and that's two BMX. It is two BMX. Mitch, Mitch. <laughs> okay, Mitch. Mitch Kirkland is a good Mitch name. Kirkland. <laughs> it's a shame he changed it when he got married. Mitch Kirkland runs a um, like a, lawn a lawnmower business. store. Yes. Fuck off. Smell you later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, you've never you've never been visited by Daniel Claus, <laughs> Santa's cousin who comes for the bad kids <laughs> on Arbor Day. Yeah, it's like my dad my dad told us all about Daniel Claus. It's like okay, well Daniel Claus, that's a you thing, not a thing. <laughs> Your dad's Daniel Claus. <laughs> Your dad was arrested, and that was the alias he gave them. Thank you for playing Arcade Audio. 
Play more at arcadeaudio.net.